All right, guys, welcome back. In this lesson, I want to talk about resistance and resistivity and what the two of those are. So we're going to ask ourselves, what is resistance? Uh, what are the formulas for resistance? Because there's going to be two of them um, right now. And then what is resistivity and how can we use that in relation to resistance? So back to what we were saying in the previous lesson, current is a flow of electrons or some charge. I say electrons because that's most commonly what we're going to use in this course. All right, so we have this flow of electrons. Now, depending on the wire or depending on the conductor that's flowing through, all right, this could be easy or difficult for the electrons to do. So it could be easy or it could be difficult. And the thing that makes this easy or difficult to do is something is the resistance of the wire, which pretty much in a sense means stopping the flow, stopping the current. Right? If, if, if you want to resist something, you stop it from happening. Right Now, there's a couple different factors that are going to make this happen, but these are actually good things because these are going to be generally things we plug in. And that's what I mean, like lights, appliances. These are going to act as resistors that are going to cause a resistance. Now, the relationship, the very simple relationship between resistance, all right, so if I look at this symbol... The symbol for resistance is going to be capital R, and it's going to have a unit, ohm, okay? Ohm. And we see that this is the Greek symbol omega that we use to use it. So that's omega, if you're wondering what that looks like. So when we put a unit, this is going to be the unit that we do. So for example, if I want to show it has a resistance equal to 3 ohms, where this is the variable and this is the unit. And the relationship from what we've seen so far is called Ohm's Law. And the relationship that we're gonna see with resistance and current and potential difference is called Ohm's Law. And you don't need to know the name of it necessarily, it's more of just a relationship. And on your reference table, it says that R equals V over I. Where V, we remember, is the potential difference and that has a unit of volts or voltage and that's going to be divided by current which has a unit of ampere that we say is just amps or capital A and volts has a lowercase v. Alright so this Ohm's law is going to be super important so it's something that we really need to understand. So let's look at an example of how we'd use Ohm's law. If I say that for example I have a current going through a wire of 0.1 amps. The circuit has a potential difference of 12 volts. What is the resistance? So I'd set up right now, I would just look at my givens and I would say that V equals 12 volts and that I equals 0.1 amps and I want to know what is R. So we say R equals V over I which equals 12 V over 0.1 amps and you are left with an R equal to something in ohms. Okay, R equals 120 ohms. Now you might be asking yourself, what gives a wire resistance? In this course, we're going to see that there's really three things. One, temperature. Two, the area, the cross-sectional area. And three, how long it is. And when I say what is cross-sectional area, if I have a wire, this right here is the cross-sectional area of the wire. All right, so that right here, this area that we see, the diameter, right? We have the diameter and the circumference, right? But it, not counting the diameter and the circumference, we can find this area in here. That's going to be our cross-sectional area. And these three things are shown in the second resistance formula, which says R equals a new variable here which is going to be used to represent two things and we have L and we have A and it's this formula that I want to look at on the next slide. R equals, this is rho, ok, 
Okay, it's a Greek symbol, similar to when we did momentum. This is L and this is A. Now what Rho stands for is resistivity. And all resistivity is, is a characteristic. So this is the temp and also what it's made out of. Meaning, is it made out of copper, silver, gold? There's a bunch of different metals that this can be made of. So what is the other conductors? L is equal to the length of the wire. A is equal to the cross-sectional area. Now, oftentimes on our reference table, you will see a chart that says resistivities at 20 degrees Celsius. So when you see this 20 degrees Celsius, we know to look on the reference table. And the other thing we need to know is that as temperature goes up, then resistivity also goes up. So there's going to be a bunch of relationships that we're going to need to look at. Let's take a look at those relationships. So we have right now R equals V over I, and we have R equals rho L over A. Okay? So now we can ask ourselves a couple different questions. As temp goes up, what happens to current? Well, if temp goes up, therefore resistivity goes up, therefore R goes up, therefore I goes down. So as temp goes up, it raises this, which raises this, and as this goes up, it makes this go down. These are going to be relationships that you are going to have to see. We can ask ourselves another one. As A goes up, what happens to I? What we can see is A goes up, R goes down, and if R goes down, I goes up. So as A goes up, so does current. All right, so we're going to use these two different formulas to look at relationships, and you could do this graphically as well. We're going to see a linear relationship between these two. As I goes up, so does V, and this is going to be R. But if we look here, we look for current to be up. We want really big area and a short wire. For I to be down, we want a little tiny A and a really really long wire. Alright guys so that should get you started with resistance and resistivity. Don't forget guys that when you see this 20% and when you see this 20 degrees Celsius to look on the reference table. I'll see you on the next lesson.